Hello everyone! The Valganus challenge rate is back and you either want to see some fun runs or you came looking for some tips. Either case, welcome. I might not be the highest item level player you have seen videos from, but you know, in challenge raids, item levels won't help you anyways. I believe I am decent when it comes to strategy and mechanics, so I feel confident I can give you some tips to clear Valganus with. First, as soon as you land in Foggy Ridge, you should tell your teammates about your strategy. The most important thing is to discuss the stagger check. Everyone in the team has to agree and be on the same mindset. With the scrapper, I am confident I can clear all stagger checks if they don't run, so I ask them to do so and I ping for them when it comes. If you just start pinging without them understanding your pings, you will just confuse them. Clearing the stagger checks grants your team light stacks, and the people with enough stacks already a great opportunity to deal damage. So unless you play a very low stagger character, you should try to convince your team to go for the checks. It's very easy to blame others for being unable to clear checks. But if you never communicated your strategy, like in this one, it's just a communication error, not a skill-based one. As soon as you fail a stagger check, the run is already over. Before I talk about the moves and more strategy, there are some things to discuss, which is not strategy, but mentality. Most of us are used to the fact that the Guardian Raid is basically a DPS check. We all go in and improvise. We just do as much damage as quickly as possible without strategy, because if we do enough damage, we can skip having a strategy. We won't die or use too many potions, because the boss is already dead by the time we run out of health. All of this is not true for Valganus. It's not a DPS check. If you think you can improvise enough damage, you will fail the raid. Valganus deals damage quicker than you do. It feels unusual, but you should spend a lot of time just moving around, relocating, and looking for opportunities to do some attacks. You will not be able to spam all your skills in the rotations that you are used to. You have to be mindful of the buttons you pressed. You should also keep your stagger skills available, as discussed earlier. If you think you can outdamage Vaganos, you are mistaken. And you do have time to work with. Guardian raids have a timer of 20 minutes, which is basically never utilized. As soon as someone is dead, the damage throughput of the team is significantly reduced. The raid is expected to take a lot longer, which means Valganus will make more hits. Your teammates are more likely to run out of potions, especially if they also don't bother dodging as much. And it all falls apart like this. Mobility and patience in this raid is key. Let's keep going on with the tips for now and I'll show you how this particular raid ended towards the end of the video. It has a good moral to it, but it requires the understanding of some mechanics. Let's talk about the moves now. In general, there are quite a few important moves to recognize and act upon, so don't start any long cast time skills until you have your dash ready to interrupt it with. The first move to explain is the bite. Everyone needs to understand this one, and it's best understood with visuals. If you don't know this mech, you can literally kill everyone immediately. Gather next to the circle in front of the boss and look above your head. If the marker above you turns black just when the boss is about to attack, you have to move into the circle. If the boss bites no one, or it bites the wrong person, literally everyone is dead. If your marker isn't black, you can already move to the back of the boss because this is a free stagger. One super secret extra tip for you, don't stand in between the circle and the boss because it stomps you and you die immediately, even if you weren't in the circle. The next move to talk about is the spill. The boss spills a bunch of stuff on the ground around which highly limits your mobility. There's always three stacks of light and a lot of darkness. It's a little counterintuitive because you can walk on top of the dark stuff, they simply explode on a certain timer. There might be some dark domes which pulsate, those repeatedly deal darkness to you. If you do get hit, you get a dark stack and lose one light, so generally it's better to be safe than sorry. You shouldn't gather more than 3 stacks until you are certain all your team has at least 3. Do not be greedy. 
the next move I want to talk about is the getaway. I call this the getaway move because that's what you should be doing immediately as you spot it. It always starts with a golden flash under the boss and the backflip. It's very recognizable if your eyes are set on the boss. The strategy is clear, you see this, you get away. The damage is nuts and the knockup makes it pointless to stay. Next up is the stagger check, which we already talked about some. The boss starts to shine in gold and starts walking slowly. But unlike the getaway move, there is no backflip. You can either run immediately or hit it like crazy. If you succeed, you get light stacks. You might want to use your skills sparingly, so you always have some high stagger skills available. As mentioned, it needs team coordination, everyone has to be on the same page, otherwise there are guaranteed deaths. The next move, the feathers. Boss jumps sideways and starts throwing golden feathers around. Do not bother the early chip damage. All you have to do is leave the area before the feathers start to explode. This is one of the best moves to do damage because the back of the boss isn't protected. The orb summoning pattern is a little hard to notice at first, but you can get used to it. You also have to forget for a few seconds that you are back at that class and hit the side of the boss. This is one of the best opportunities to do damage. There are two moves which are counterable, but they have a very short counter window, so it's very hard to reactively counter them. If you want to get them, you can preemptively hit counter skills when the boss is about to make a new move. You can get lucky with them. Let's talk about the end rage now, which to my understanding happens around 30% health remaining. There are quite a few changes at the end. The boss turns black and goes wild. The boss no longer makes stagger checks or the bite attack, which is a boon, sort of. This means that you can solo kill the enraged boss, which is important because your teammates are likely going to die to the new and improved moves. When enraged, the spill no longer gives any light, only the dark rain. In fact, with the spill changes, the stagger and the bite gun, there is no way to gather any light except for the new move introduced, the so-called pizza. The premise of this move is super simple. It doesn't sound hard at all. All you have to do is run around the boss in a circle once. But it's not that easy. The hard part is that most people don't really know when it's coming. They aren't ready for it. Also worth noting, if you were to mess it up, you are pretty much guaranteed dead. You always have to follow the direction of the whirlwind at the start of the pizza. You can see the side-by-side -side comparison here. In all team attempts, this was the move that repeatedly killed everyone in the team. And when this person on screen got one pizza right with my guidance, they were very happy and proud of that. You can run far away when the pizza is coming, or if you are not ready for it when it comes, you better stay away, do not attempt a risky one. Rather miss a pizza than die for one. So how do you know when the pizza is coming? First off, you should always pay attention, don't miss any move the boss does. Try to keep it in screen so you can see what it does. The pattern is always the following. There's a new whirlwind, the dark explosion move that is only available in the enraged phase, after which it does one or two attacks maybe, then another dark whirlwind explosion immediately followed up by the pizza. Do not repeat the mistake I made here. The direction of the whirlwind might be different on the explosion move and the pizza. So basically, you pay attention to the boss and when you see the first dark explosion, you stop doing damage and start to prepare for the pizza. By preparing, I mean you should lure the boss away from the wall because you simply cannot do a pizza next to a wall. Remember, the boss attacks you and follows you. You can lure it wherever you want. This is the second thing you usually have to explain to your team, preferably before the enrage happens. Sometimes the boss starts immediately with a pizza after transforming, no dark explosions or anything. So be ready for that, it might come up in your runs too. It happened to me a few times, it's definitely a thing, so stay safe. Because this is a prime opportunity to die. 
After this many mechanics, let's talk a bit about your presence of mind. You should know what you sign up for. Wagonus, in my opinion, is among the hardest content available. It is very far from your generic daily guardian raids. Having a quick test run really helps you to get up to speed before an actual attempt. How I practiced, I went into the guardian raids and said I'll use no potions and see how the moves work. I also had a run or two where I said I will use up to 5 blue potions and see how far I can get with them. This is actually what you can see on the screen right now, one of my very first test runs. All of this has an impact on your mindset as well. With this you understand you have nothing to lose, it's just a test run. In an actual attempt afterwards, you will be more likely to accept the mistakes of your teammates, and this will help you set your expectations of success right. In my opinion, this boss is also super fun, but honestly, it's quite sad that it has no rewards to match the effort. However, I think it is very fun to try something actually hard in this game. That is why I have messed around and practiced some Velgana solo. I did beat it a few times, and it's been a thrilling experience, much more interesting than the majority of the content available. As promised earlier, let me show you the end of that run. This was one of the earlier runs, based on which I gave some of the tips before. The best practices I already told you. My teammates were gone for a longer while now, and it has only been me here fighting. However, right here, I lost the light stack then another one, after which the boss did the pizza next to a wall. So I knew I will do only half damage for a long while, and I didn't want to wait. I acted on impulse and did a charging blow into the pizza to get one light stack, and I lost half my health for it. I had no more potions, I did this just to get possibly one light stack, which in hindsight would have been lost again anyways. I still had 4 minutes to work with, but I wanted to cut it short. I didn't want to wait for another pizza. Once I realized how big of a mistake that was, I felt like giving up. And so I thought I should try to go in and do an all-in and hope for the best. Which is the same mistake done again, being impatient. As expected, I lost and Valgana survived with 0.3% health remaining. I even had my awakening skill ready. I was just impatient. I messed up that run because of some stupid light stacks. I often felt like I can't do anything if I don't have the light buff on. But you can turn this thought around in your head. You shouldn't say, I don't do damage until I have the stacks, but rather say, this boss has a lot of health, but I can deal double damage if I collect the stacks. This mental model makes light be a reward for playing well. It creates a positive feedback for getting the pizza right, but you won't be angry or impatient for missing them. One final tip for those still watching, which is gonna be roughly 10% of people at best. Since Velganus takes up a lot of space and it needs to stay away from walls, I recommend having pheromone bombs. During a kill, it will try to escape twice, so when it is one of the big open areas, drop the bomb and don't let it escape, so that you have more room to work with during the enrage. Thank you for watching. This video has been a lot of effort to make, so please tell me if it had helped you, so I know my efforts were justified. Have a good one everyone, and see you around in a future video.